Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's video we're going to be introducing my new workshop companion. This is Connie the Border Collie and she's going to be keeping me company in the workshop. So we're going to be making a lead rack so she can put her walking leads on there, little treat jar on there and a little box for dispensing some poo bags. Isn't that right? And we're going to personalise it with her name as well. So I hope you really enjoy tonight's project and you find it fun and useful especially if you have dogs at home. And if you haven't done so already, please remember to support me in subscribing to my channel to get more content like this your way. So the material I'm gonna be using for this project, I've just got a, a pine board. It's a little offcut left over from a, a furniture making project, but alternatively you could use a piece of Euro pallet. So just the slats off the Euro pallets, and that would be a really free and cheap way of uh, producing this then. So we're gonna to need to use a tri-square to square off the edges and we're going to trim these nice and square on the compound miter saw. We'll do exactly the same then with the pallet wood. Square, 90 degree line. So we've got them all nice and smooth and sanded. The next thing we're going to do is work on the layout, what we want on this little pegboard. So I'm going to put a little template of my dog's name and a few paw prints there. I'm going to be cutting those out and we can use a pyrography iron to put those on. I want a little treat jar, so after she's been really good on a walk, we can put that there, get some treats from the jar. I'm going to have to make a little holder to hold this into place. I want a little poo bag box dispenser, so I've got the whole bags there. I can just take one out, a couple out, put them in my pocket, ready for the walks. And I'm going to want a few little dowel pegs coming off this to hold the, the different leads for the walk, so at least two and that should be sorted then. So in order to house the jar really safely and securely, I'm gonna be using a scrap block of this pitch pine just from some construction material. Gonna have a little hole that I'm gonna create on the lathe. So if you didn't have a lathe to do this, you could use a large force and a bit to drill to the same sort of size diameter as the bottom of the jar. We should be able to plop the jar into this and take it out easily, and it should be a nice tight fit so it's secure. In order to help us find the centre, we're going to use a ruler and we're going to draw corner to corner. That centre point then, we're going to be drilling out with a force a bit to fit over the pin jaws. So the hole we've drilled, we're going to attach on the pin jaws, expand the jaws then into that little mortise we've created, making sure it's nice and flat along the, the side. Making sure we've got our safety equipment, power respirator on. Gradually bring up the speed. Put a little tiny shape into the top, so a slight sort of chamfer type thing, just to make it look a little bit more attractive. And we're going to work out how big the glass is now to drill in that hole. So how we find out the diameter, how to mark this on, I use some outside calipers to get the width I need. I then set my dividers to the same width as the outside calipers and that should give us nice accurate hole size to work to. So let's get that on there. I'm going to raise my tool rest so it's above centre. Turn on the machine. I'm only going to touch with one point and I want to make sure that's pointing downwards slightly so it's trailing as it's pushing in. Start the trail cut with the parting tool. The, the base all sorted so it's nice tight fit you just about pull it out and I've done the, the Japanese technique called Shoshobi Ban 
over the top. And I've got lots of videos on my uh, channel showing this if you're interested to see how I get this uh, effect of a piece of pipe. I've just really quickly as well uh, turned a top to go on the over the top just to hide that jar lid, glued it to the, the jar lid and I've even put a little logo disc in the top just to brand it. Uh, if you're interested to see how these jar lids are turned I'll do another video on that so if you, you want to see a video like that let me know in the comments below. The next thing I'm going to work on is the lettering so I want it to go right at the top there. Now there's a couple of ways we could do this if you've got a neat handwriting you can even use like a sharpie or a pro marker and just literally just draw it on there. My handwriting is not that great so I'm going to create a little template so out of this. So I just print this out with a normal printer. I'm going to cut around that with a scalpel and I can use that then as a template to draw around. I could even use some spray paint there. So I've just cut it out with a scalpel. I'm going to go around the outline of the shape. So we've got it all traced out. We're going to use a pyrography iron. So we've got like a, a wood burning type kit. So it's the heat, the electrical current going through here. It's heating up this brass tip and that should help us burn it onto the board. And it'll permanently burn this in then to the, to the wood. And I think that looks a little bit nicer than just using like a marker pen. Okay, so we've got all the pyrography done and we're ready to do the next step. Are you happy with that? Yeah? Good. So the next step we're going to do is the poo bag. So we normally buy these in about 200 just to save a little bit of money. So we're going to be making a simple dovetail box to hold these in. Now you could just quite easily do a butt jointed box instead of a dovetail. I haven't done one in a while so fancy giving it a go. And the measurement is going to be 200 millimeters wide, 100 millimeters tall and 75 millimeters deep to hold all those poo bags. Hello, hello. Done all the dimensioning off camera and these were originally some pallet boards so I just put them through the thickness planer, jointed the edges and they've come up pretty nice considering what they did look like. So we're going to mark on the tails on these long panels and then we can work on the pins on the short panels. I'm going to do this in a really simple way. So I've got my wood for the side I've cut. I'm going to use my finger as a gauge across the, the surface to make sure it's all nice and level. As soon as it's level push down on the top with your thumb and I'm going to mark a little tiny mark there indicating the thickness of the material. So we're going to be using my tri-square to draw a 90 degree line across and this will allow me to get accurately the thickness of the material all the way across the work. Now in terms of marking out dovetails I want to mark out two chunky decorative ones and there's lots of ways of doing it. This is just my way and I found it's really easy. So you measure the width, divide by two, so it's 100 millimeters. in this case it's 50. Then either side of that halfway mark you want to divide by two again. So 25, half 50, 25, half 50. Now these halfway marks are going to become where the tails are going to be. So I'm going to use my tri-square again to draw a nice straight 90 degree line up on both of these lines. Like so. Now the bottom of this line is going to be where the tail is. And in this case we're going to be doing a tail that the bottom is going to be 20 millimeters. We're measuring 10 millimeters either side. Do the same on the other one. So 10 millimeters either side. Good girl, Connie. And at the top, then we're going to double it. Now there's lots of different formulas and angle gauges. You can even use something called um, a bevel gauge to figure these out. But the best way I've found to doing it. Hello, saying hello. Good girl. Best way I've found to do it is to just double the measurement. So I've got 20 on the bottom. So I want to do 40 on the top or 20 either side and I can just dot the dot and we'll get a nice looking dovetail. So there's lots of different angles you can use for hardwoods and softwoods but if you're just starting out this is just a nice easy way of doing it with just a ruler. Line across like that and just so we don't get confused what I like to do is shade the areas I'm going to be getting rid of and that will allow me when I come to do my cutting to cut on the waist side to the shaded side of the line.
Right, mark out the pins then, so this is pretty easy. So we just use the thickness of material again as a gauge. Now what I like to do with mine, because I tend to get confused otherwise, is letter match them. So I've got the letter E drawn out there, letter E drawn out there, and when I come to put them together then I'm not going to get confused later on down the line. So I'm just going to tighten this up in the vise. So the important thing is we're getting the corners matched up. And I'm just going to use my pencil, you can use a marking knife to do this as well. I'm just scoring where those lines are. Now I can reinforce where those lines are with a ruler so I can push a little bit heavier on them to make them easier to cut when I come to cutting them out. Now the next step, so where each of these lines hits the side, Same again on the back. We're going to be drawing a 90 degree line down with our tri square. And I'm going to shade what I want to get rid of just so I don't confuse myself. Now, I'm going to want to get rid of these square sections, so I'm going to do a really simple straight cut, straight cut, diagonal, straight cut across. I'm going to get rid of that on the band saw. Seems I've done that, I'm going to come back and we should be getting something that looks like that in the next step. So on these top lines then, I'm going to use a tenon saw to come and cut them up. And I'm just using a little coping saw then to cut these little triangle bits away. Sorry about the one camera view, that's all I've got at the moment. I'll plan to upgrade sometime in the future. Right, let's see if this fits. Okay, a little bit tight in this corner. So we can just use a chisel to peer down the edge. So I'm going to want to create a little dispenser slot in the front. So I'm going to be drilling two holes. I've got a 16mm spade bit set up in my drill. I've got a scrap block of wood underneath as well. So as I'm drilling through into that scrap block, it's less likely to tear out the back. So I'm going to drill two little angled dowel holes and I've got a 60mm dowel, 16mm spade bit. So I'm going to go on a rough 45 degree angle. And I'm going to adjust enough in so that the dowel can fit tightly into there and we can secure it with a screw through the other side. Alternatively you could buy some hooks. If you're on a budget this works quite nicely. So it should be a tight sort of interference fit with these. So obviously we've got to cut the dowel down. Let's get them in the hole like so at an angle. So we can trim those down to where we need and because we've got that little hole coming through from the um, from the point of the drill we can screw through which would expand this in the hole and make a really tight joint. Just add a little bit of glue into the holes and knock these in. I've got them slightly staggered so they're different sizes, we can get different size leads on. Right, we're going to have to attach the dispenser and the little treats jar. And the way I'm going to do that is drill some pilot holes through. It's got a scrap board underneath. I'm going to be using a drill that's slightly smaller than the size of the screws I'm going to be going all the way through with. And I want to screw these rather than glue them, just in case in the future I want to take them off for any reason. They're easy to replace or fix. So I should be getting some holes coming through on the back. And I'm going to be using a countersink bit next to make like a little 
cone shape inwards so that when I come to screw the screws in they're not going to be sticking out on the back so this is the little countersink bit I'm going to be using so what I'm going to do to make my screwing a little bit easier is clamp this in place make sure I've got it nice and square it doesn't look wonky use a little impact driver to help me drive them in okay I'll do the same with the other one and we'll have a look at it looks so here's the completed piece so we've got our treats jar then that we can refill so after she's been good in a walk and it's nice and secure in there as you can see so upside down so it's not going to fall out at any point. Uh, the food bag dispensers then, so you can pull them out from the, the front and refill from the top then. And last of all, two little leash racks there to, to keep them into place. So probably overcomplicate this a little bit, but I wanted to include a little bit of turning for my turning subscribers, a little bit of joinery work then for the people that are interested in the, in the woodwork side. But you can make a far simpler version of one of these out of a piece of pallet wood, as I mentioned at the start. And all I've done is drilled some angle holes like I showed you in this one, and it does the job. So I hope you've really enjoyed tonight's project. It's been something a little bit different again. If you haven't done so already, please remember to subscribe by hitting the link there, as that really helps me out in getting more videos like this your way. So I hope you have a great night. Dielchenwald, Norsta.